Hey guys, what's going on? Today is Mother's Day. It's Sunday. Just got through spending the day with my family. Had a blast. Um, had a really busy weekend working on the race car. Uh, Friday and Saturday. Had some good success this weekend. Really happy. Um, had a few issues come up with the car, so I come over here today to, um, on the way home, my loving wife uh, allowed me to come over here and take a look at it real quick. I uh, had an interesting surprise today. Um, one of my uh, friends from the racetrack, John Dock, y'all all know him. I'm sure that's why I, all of y'all are here and I've got a ton of new subscribers and I really appreciate it. That was uh, really unexpected. That was the methanol drum. It apparently is not happy that I opened the door. It's kind of warm in the trailer. I'll be sweating in a few minutes. Um, he sent a message to me earlier and uh, just, uh, I really appreciate it, John. That means a lot. Um, you know, and hopefully you guys, the, the new folks that are, are, are going to see my channel, uh, y'all will get to see some interesting information. Um, I'll try to, uh, share some of the things that we do. Um, uh, some of it is very redneckish, but you know, that's, that's what makes the world go round. Uh, it seems different techniques and different, um, attitudes and different ways to make things go fast. There's tons of ways to make cars go fast. Um, everybody has a little bit different opinion, so but it's fun. It's all it's all good. But today we're going to talk a little bit about the spark plugs. And you see them sitting out. I, I did the spark plug video um, a few days ago, and so this is going to be kind of a rehash of that with some new number ten plugs. These spark plugs, these are fresh out of the motor from last night. Now these are NGK number tens, and I know the other ones look pretty bad. Um, so these are number 10s, um, hardly any cadmium burn on any of them. And this thing made a boatload of boost. Uh, that failing map sensor that I had really was, uh, very problematic. Uh, I finally got to the point with the, with the, the tune up where, you know, I was looking at the computer it was showing it was only making 21 pounds of boost. Um, I've got Holly EFI on it. Um, the EFI was correcting the fueling. Uh, so it was going to give me target air fuel ratio uh, no matter what. And I knew that I had it pretty safe um, with the air fuel ratio. So, um, you know, I was real happy with that. Timing kind of threw me off for a little bit. But that kind of made me, uh, you know, think about something. You know, with electronics, a lot of people... Uh, especially with the age of fuel injection now, they they rely 100% on what the data is showing. What does the data from the wideband say? What does that nice NTK uh, oxygen sensor, what are the readings? What do they say? Um, you know, and then you, you always get the questions, well, well, what do people recommend? You know, that X amount of boost, it needs X amount of timing, uh, it needs X amount of air-fuel ratio. Because people kind of get hung up. They get hung up on the on the the data that the data logger says, and they fail to pour the, pull these spark plugs out. You know, I read somewhere a long time ago, the spark plug is the only witness to combustion, and that is 100% correct. When you get a, a cam that is, is designed... Uh, you know, depending on the overlap, depending on where you put it in the motor, um, it all makes a difference on your dynamic compression ratio. And, you know, so when you, when you get stuff done to the motor, you know, it's all in a, a perfect world, perfect scenario. And, you know, but the spark plug is it. The spark plug is the witness. It is the, the thing that tells you exactly what is happening um, and what you should and should not be doing. So in my last setup, with the failing map sensor, it was failing, I didn't know it was failing, but I was pulling the plugs out very often, especially in the initial phase when you're tuning the car. Uh, pull all the plugs. You can't just pull one, you gotta figure out which one's your hottest cylinder. Um, and then occasionally you can just rely on that one when you're looking for the most heat. The things change so you want to pull out all the plugs frequently um you know in the beginning stages every pass all eight plugs need to be be coming out of the motor so you can take a look at it you look at your data log you look at your air fuel ratio and then you look at your 
your spark plugs, and then you look at your spark plugs, and you ask yourself, do the spark plugs tell me the same story that my data logger is showing me? If the answer is yes, the spark plugs are telling me the same thing the data logger is, then you're good to go. No problems, no issues. If that's not the case, if your spark plugs are telling me, oh, I'm a little hotter, or oh, no, I'm really cold, then that's where it becomes interesting. That's where you have to make some decisions. And when looking at data, looking at air-fuel ratio, and looking at the, the run on the computer versus looking at the spark plugs, I always believe the spark plug. The spark plug is what's going to tell you the, the, the true story of how hot the combustion was happening in the cylinder. Was it hot enough that it was melting the electrodes? Was it not hot enough at all to where it was changing the cadmium color? Um, that's what the, the true story is. So always rely on the spark plug. Uh, prime example, right now I'm in this situation. I just told y'all what needs to happen. I know what needs to happen, but in my map sensor failing, it had 27 degrees of timing. Air fuel ratio was 3.8, 4.0, which was right on target, but it was saying it only had 21 pounds of boost. That was inaccurate. Now I have, I have upgraded turbos, which y'all all saw that. I've got the new GTR turbo. So it is a bad boy. It is making a bunch of boost. Um, but looking at my data logger, um, and looking at the, the spark table that I have in the computer, it has 19 degrees of timing at 40 pounds of boost. And 40 pounds of boost. 40 pounds of boost. Did you get boost. that? 40 pounds of boost. Unbelievable. Had no idea the motor was making this much boost. 40 pounds. Now I look at my data logger and I go, great, I've got 40 pounds of boost. I found my low, low boost issue. But now my spark plugs, they say, that's great. I'm glad you found the 40 pounds of boost. But we ain't got no heat in the motor. We need heat. So now I think it's about five or six degrees low on timing. And so I'm going to start putting that time into it based on what this spark plug is showing me. Not based on what the data is showing me. Not based on what my best buddies, what their engines need. Not based on anybody else's information other than the spark plug that is in that hole that I just pu pulled out. So that's your key. That's the, the whole point of this video is I just want to make sure people understand, you know, data is good. Information on the data logger is good. But it is not a substitute for reading that spark plug. And, and making changes, ultimate changes, uh, to the motor. Um, and of course you wanna do small incremental changes, uh, half a degree or a degree at a time. You don't wanna do big big wholesale changes. So I think I'm about five degrees low on time and uh, from, from what it looks like on the heat on the plug on what I need to happen. So with me doing that and thinking that, I'm gonna add a degree at a time. And then, you know, all that's going to take place and, and we'll see what happens. And, you know, you should be picking up mile per hour and, and ET. And at some point, you're going to reach that line to where you don't pick up anything else. So if you add a degree of timing and it picks up two miles per hour or one mile per hour, you go back, you add another degree of timing and it picks up another two mile per hour. And then you add another degree of timing and it picks up a half a mile per hour. And then you add one more degree of timing and it picks up nothing, then most likely you know you are at the point where you need to stop. And so at that point, I usually back up to the, the previous uh, spot and then that's where I keep my timing. So, um, you know, timing is important. Uh, you know, I always live by the, the philosophy, uh, the, the lower you can have the timing, the better on the engine. And, you know, as the spark occurs, um, you know, the, the, the time in advance, basically the piston is, is that degree from top dead center. So if you can spark it, you know, theoretically at zero degrees of timing and you get a full complete burn, then that's going to be better on the motor versus, you know, 40 degrees of timing 
and the piston is coming up and then the, the flame kernel starts. But you know, there are some motors, especially naturally aspirated, of course you have to run, you know, 20, 28, 30 degrees, 32 degrees, 30, you know, six, 38 degrees. It just completely depends. Some naturally aspirated and nitrous motors, you know, re require more timing. It's just a, a matter of what the motor wants. Cylinder heads make a big difference. Uh, recently, in the last few years, a lot of people are going to the, the softened chambers. And what that does is it slows down the, the flame front. It just makes it so you don't have, you know, the, the combustion, the compression, you know, pushing up into the small combustion chamber. Um, you know, it's, it's like a hemi head, essentially. You're making it like a hemispherical um, cylinder head. And it just, it helps. It makes them so they're less time insensitive. Turbo cars and blower cars are, are hard enough and blower cars are even harder than turbos. Build something easy, build a turbo car. So I think one of the key things to make sure you're, you're paying attention to is your tuner. Uh, some tuners like their air fuel ratios really rich and a lot of timing. Um, other tuners prefer to have the air fuel mixture leaner and less timing. Uh, ultimately, I mean, both of those can result in very fast cars, uh, but ultimately you wanna listen to your tuner and take their advice and hopefully everyone has super fast, reliable race cars or street cars, whichever you prefer. All right, thanks guys. Oh, and John Doc, you the man. And once again, I wanna thank John for turning y'all onto my channel. Hopefully it can be informative for you guys and y'all keep an eye on his uh, bad to the bone 28 inch tire hot rod coming soon. Thanks.